rain from the skies in a method called cloud seeding. We can go to this cloud, it's a wannabe, gonna be rain cloud, and make it a bigger rain cloud. We, in essence, fertilize it. Clouds are made up of tiny particles of smoke, dust, or pollen, which attract water molecules. When the moisture content of a cloud reaches saturation point, rain falls. Herb and his team increase a cloud's rain potential by spraying a chemical compound of silver iodide, millions of additional particles that attract water. We've got all this moisture now grasping these little particles. They're rubbing together and we're getting a bigger, better cloud. 12-inch flares filled with silver iodide ride shotgun on the wing of a Piper Comanche four-seater. Okay, these cells are looking good and maintained, and so there's some new cells forming to the east, we'll go about 10 miles, and let's check those out. Once the pilots are airborne, meteorologist Jennifer Wright reads the cloud patterns and guides them to formations that can be enhanced by seeding. Our target area is about nine counties, and it's a little over four million acres. Let's go ahead and do a 40 gram, and we'll work that in as we move to the southwest. Jennifer gives the pilot the go-ahead to ignite his flares and seed the cloud formation with silver iodide particles. Well, the thunderstorms, as we see them, you'll see that they start to become more organized. Mm -hmm. We get more yellows and oranges, which is a high reflectivity, which means there's more rainfall in the cloud. The last year alone, we put a little over two inches of extra additional rainfall across our district. If you think about an additional two inches over four million acres, you're, at, you're talking about a lot, a lot of water. Doppler radar and rain gauges placed throughout the district indicate that clouds treated by the seeding project in 2007 yielded 15% more rainfall than they would have without treatment. Much needed precipitation in this current drought. But without the power to modify the weather, 150,000 square miles of farmland, one third of the entire Great Plains, are turned to dust. Unfortunately, the reality of controlling the weather is far trickier, and it's growing talk that our future depends on it. Peter Pitts investigates. On October 1st, in Beijing, they had a parade, and the weather was fine. The fine weather, who made it happen? See, the Chinese insist it was all down to them. It's a controversial area for us weather scientists, and for years we've been looking for an answer. Can we really control the weather? We know how rain comes about. Particles in the air cause water molecules to congregate around them and big raindrops. These particles are called points of nucleation, and they attract the water vapor that forms clouds. But actually, water droplets aren't quite enough. You don't only get light rain or drizzle out of the clouds, just composed of water drops. You actually need to bring ice into the equation. And when you see a big black cloud like this looming, you can be certain that there's ice somewhere in that cloud. As the cloud rises, the atmosphere gets colder, of course. You start to get the water droplets turning to ice. And ice crystals actually grow much, much quicker than water droplets. They also stick together as well and form snowflakes. When they get big enough, they start to fall against the upper apples going up through the cloud. So it comes out of the cloud as snow. And of course, it's cold enough, and the snow will land on the mountains, like these ones in Scotland. In the summer, though, that snow actually melts quite high up in the cloud. So then it falls with rain at the surface, and the same sort of thing happens in the tropics as well. And that process has actually been uh, known about for quite some time. But then scientists discovered that if you dump silver iodide into the clouds, it makes the process even quicker and more effective, making it rain sooner. And that means you empty the clouds, you Look fill the your that parade. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. How do you prove that it was going to rain on your parade in the first place? 
which was precisely the question asked during the 60th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. The people from the Beijing Weather Modification Office are adamant it works. And there are obvious advantages to making it rain. For example, where there isn't any water. The Chinese claim that cloud seeding added more than 7.4 trillion cubic feet of rain between 1995 and 2003. But now we're in the age of climate change and we're looking for solutions to bigger problems. Thus, the science of weather control has been pressed into the science of saving the planet. It's called geoengineering, and while it's very much a reaction to our problems rather than a solution, it is making a lot of people quite excited. Is that America? Oh, what funny that. What's proposed is making use of something we've talked about before in the weather show, the albedo effect. It's essentially the shininess of the Earth's surface. The sun's energy coming in hits that surface, some of it bounces back again. Now, it happens naturally from things like clouds and the polar ice caps, but uh, what well, people have suggested perhaps painting the tops of buildings white in our major cities to help bounce back some of that energy, mimicking the effects of uh, volcanic eruptions by increasing the number of particles in the atmosphere, <coughs> that increases the cloudiness, particularly over the oceans, and again reflects some of that light back. There's even been talk of putting giant sunshades up in space. But it isn't all about simply reflecting the heat. Some of these ideas are aimed at grabbing the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And one way of doing that is by getting plants to grow in the ocean. By plants, I mean algae. And this is a typical algal bloom that we see now when the water gets warm enough. So it's a natural thing. It's a, a type of plant that's taking in carbon dioxide, locking it up, and then when the algae dies, it drifts to the bottom of the ocean. But the idea is that you actually fertilize the ocean to encourage more of that plant, and so locking up more CO2. The problem with all this high <coughs> science is, does it really help? Geoengineering is only a fallback position, and many scientists say we're only talking about geoengineering to modify our climate now because we've been modifying it in the opposite direction for the last 300 years. Uh.